Ron Howard, even though he is 69 years old, is still always remembered as the boy Opie on The Andy Griffith Show. Ignoring Ron's extremely professional acting ability, his negative experience during filming is what makes the audience curious. It is known that The Andy Griffith Show contains a lot of things that Ron Howard hates, and we will reveal them to you in this video. Let's begin. Ron Howard, a key figure in the iconic television series Happy Days, recently disclosed on The Graham Norton Show that he experienced a sense of disrespect as the popularity of Henry Winkler's character, Arthur the Fonz Fonzarelli, soared, eventually eclipsing Howard's character, Richie Cunningham, who was initially intended to be the lead. In the early days of Happy Days, Richie Cunningham was unequivocally established as the lead character. Howard acknowledged the remarkable performance of Henry Winkler as the Fonz, a character that quickly captivated the audience. However, as the show progressed and Winkler's star continued to rise, the dynamics on set shifted, particularly in the attitudes of the show's executives, studio heads, and network heads. Ron Howard detailed the challenges he faced when the cast went on the road to promote the show. Despite the excitement surrounding Fonzie, Howard found himself on the receiving end of what he described as disrespect from a business standpoint and in terms of interactions. The press began to question Howard about the perceived shift in his position on the show, asking if he felt like a secondhand citizen on his own show. Interestingly, despite the professional challenges Howard faced, his personal relationship with Henry Winkler remained unaffected. Howard emphasized that the tension between him and the network did not cast a shadow on their enduring friendship. In fact, Winkler held the special role of being the godfather to all four of Howard's children. Reflecting on this challenging period, Ron Howard described it as a significant learning experience. He acknowledged the entertainment industry as a tough and competitive business, requiring a comprehensive understanding from all perspectives. The experience served as a reminder for Howard to pursue his own dreams, aspiring to be in charge of productions, tell the stories he wanted to tell, and ultimately be a filmmaker. Despite the professional challenges, Happy Days enjoyed a successful run, spanning 11 seasons from 1974 to 1984 on ABC. The show, set in 1950s and 60s Milwaukee, centered around the Cunningham family, including Father Howard, Mother Marion, son Richie, and daughter Joni, along with Richie's friends Potsy and Ralph. Of course, the local bad boy, Arthur Fonzi Fonzarelli, played a central role in the series, contributing to its enduring popularity. Ron Howard fondly reminisces about his time on the iconic show as a child actor. However, amid the generally positive memories, there is one particular episode that stands out for Howard, The Pickle Story. In this memorable episode, Aunt B, portrayed by Francis Bavier, goes on a pickle-making spree, creating what the characters later describe as pickles tasting like kerosene. Despite the unappetizing flavor, the characters, including Opie, pretend to enjoy them to spare Aunt B's feelings. The plot takes a humorous turn when Aunt B decides to enter her supposedly beloved pickles into a contest. For Ron Howard, filming The Pickle Story presented a unique challenge because, in real life, he harbored a strong dislike for pickles. In a candid reflection, Howard admitted, I hated pickles so much. Biting those pickles was just an unbelievable burden. It was a chore, painful. What I remember of the pickle episode is just all the wincing and frowning. The acting came in trying to act like I enjoyed the pickles. The challenges didn't stop at pickles, as Howard disclosed a behind-the-scenes secret about scenes featuring ice cream. Due to the hot set lights that would have melted real ice cream during filming, he was served cold mashed potatoes instead. This detail adds a humorous touch to the actor's recollections highlighting the creative solutions employed on set to navigate the practical challenges of filming. Ron Howard, surprisingly, didn't watch them during his time on the show as a child actor. It wasn't until he was older that he decided to revisit the iconic series. As he began watching The Andy Griffith Show in his later years, 
Ron Howard found himself captivated by the episodes. Once he started, he developed a regular routine of tuning in every week to watch. This shift in perspective, from being a participant in the making of the show to a viewer enjoying it like many others, likely provided Howard with a new appreciation for the timeless charm and humor that the series had to offer. In the iconic opening credits of The Andy Griffith Show, viewers are treated to the charming scene of Opie Taylor, played by a young Ron Howard, picking up a stone and tossing it into the peaceful waters of Myers Lake, a fishing spot in the outskirts of Mayberry. However, the reality behind this seemingly idyllic moment is unveiled in Ron Howard's new book, The Boys, a Memoir of Hollywood and Family. In this revealing memoir, Ron Howard, now 67, shares a delightful anecdote about the filming of this particular scene. At the tender age of six, little Ronnie Howard found that his skinny little arm lacked the power to throw the rock into the water convincingly. Unbeknownst to the audience, the next take involved a bit of movie magic. Ron, facing the camera, pretended to toss the stone, while the prop master, hidden behind a tree, skillfully threw it on his behalf. The behind-the-scenes revelation offers a glimpse into the early experiences of Ron Howard as a child actor, learning the art of make-believe on the set of a beloved television series. However, as Ron reflects in his memoir, growing up on The Andy Griffith Show exposed him to not only the world of pretend, but also to the harsh realities of adult problems, prejudices, and ugliness. Despite the challenges, Ron Howard and his brother, actor Clint Howard, who co-wrote The Boys with him, credit their parents, Rance and Gene Howard, for providing a safe and grounded upbringing in the midst of Hollywood's glamour and complexities. Ron emphasizes that their parents' protectiveness was rooted in love and fear, rejecting any notion of a stage parent concept solely focused on safeguarding their children as potential financial assets. Amidst the glamour of Desilu Studios, where the show was filmed, Ron's innocence was shielded by a watchful eye, an essential role played by his parents, especially considering the less-than-wholesome environment that unfolded around him. The atmosphere at Desilu Studios was not one of restrained professionalism. Ron vividly recalls a crew of salty old characters who, true to their nature, swore liberally and indulged in heavy drinking. The prop master, a key figure in the production, was often intoxicated by lunchtime, reflecting a culture that was prevalent in the entertainment industry during the 1960s. Furthermore, the era's lax attitudes towards smoking meant that everyone on set, including crew members, smoked continuously, disregarding any concerns for health or comfort. Ron reminisces that his eyes were frequently burning due to the constant haze of smoke. The on-set bathroom, an unexpected source of education for a young and innocent Ron, became a curious place filled with obscene, anatomically correct graffiti covering its walls. In one of the more humorous and awkward moments recounted in the memoir, Ron's father, Rance, found himself in the position of explaining this peculiar phenomenon to his son. Rance tried to shed light on the situation by explaining that some men, while seated on the toilet, had a penchant for drawing explicit images. He went on to advise Ron never to engage in such activities himself. While Ron Howard recalls being treated with empathy and kindness by the crew, he unveils a stark contrast when it comes to Jim Nabors, the actor who portrayed Gomer Pyle and happened to be gay. In an era when don't ask, don't tell was the unspoken rule, Jim Nabors faced derogatory comments from the crew behind his back, with disparaging terms like homo being used without a hint of kindness. Ron reflects on this aspect of the set dynamics, highlighting the challenges and prejudices that Jim Nabors encountered due to his sexuality. Despite the generally positive environment, even the beloved Andy Griffith and his co-star Don Knotts faced personal challenges. Ron describes Andy Griffith as a wonderful and big-hearted man, but he notes that both Griffith and Knotts were grappling with the difficulties of their failing marriages. The close friends, 
who had initially met on Broadway in 1955's No Time for Sergeants, often commiserated within Ron's earshot. Their struggles were so significant that both Andy and Don sought the assistance of psychologists to navigate through their personal issues. In one memorable moment, Ron recalls overhearing Andy Griffith and Don Knotts discussing their therapy sessions, with Andy raising the topic of latent homosexuality. He asked Don, I don't think I qualify for that one. What about you, Don? The memoir delves into Andy Griffith's personal life, uncovering the genuine pain he endured during his marriage. Andy's doctor suggested that he immersed himself in extra-long hours on the show to avoid returning home to his wife. The extent of his emotional distress was vividly captured when, after a Christmas break, Andy returned with a bandaged hand, recounting a story of getting drunk, becoming angry, and putting his fist through a door. This raw admission showcased the emotional toll that Andy Griffith's personal life took on him. In contrast, Ron Howard faced a different set of challenges during his time on The Andy Griffith Show. Despite the fame he gained from starring as Opie, the character became a source of taunts and bullying at school. Classmates, keen on finding rhyming insults, discovered that Opie rhymed with derogatory words like dope, mope, and soapy. This led to a difficult period for Ron who, for a time, didn't feel safe going to the bathroom at school. The inevitable day came when he publicly wet his pants, a humiliating experience that added to his misery. Despite these hardships, Ron's parents encouraged him to persevere and complete the school year. The path was undeniably rough, marked by several fights as Ron grappled with the bullying. However, as time went on, he formed his own circle of friends, creating a supportive posse that helped him navigate the challenges of school life. In Ron Howard's detailed reflections on his time on The Andy Griffith Show, the narrative delves into the accelerated coming-of-age experience he underwent, distinct from the typical childhood. Despite the challenges and adult angst witnessed on set, Ron expresses a lack of regrets, attributing the richness of his experience to the unique environment of Hollywood. A poignant example of the contrasting elements of the show's atmosphere is highlighted through the story of Howard McNear, the actor behind Floyd the Barber. In the third season, McNear suffered a serious stroke. However, rather than letting go of the beloved actor, Andy Griffith, known for his magnanimous nature, was determined to retain McNear. In a testament to the camaraderie and creativity on set, the crew devised carefully hidden supports to assist Howard McNear in standing for his scenes, enabling him to continue working. This act of kindness and innovation served as a valuable lesson for Ron Howard about the magic of Hollywood, illustrating the industry's ability to adapt and support its members in times of adversity. Ron expresses gratitude for his time as Opie Taylor, acknowledging that the experience of inhabiting that character and walking in his kids played a defining role in shaping his early life. Do you want to know how Ron Howard really feels about The Andy Griffith Show? Ron Howard's gratitude for The Andy Griffith Show and its profound impact on his career is a testament to the enduring influence of the Econic series. Despite the passing of time, Ron continues to reflect appreciatively on the pivotal role the show played in shaping his trajectory in Hollywood. The roots of Ron Howard's illustrious career were planted when, at the tender age of six, his parents, who were also entrenched in the entertainment industry, allowed him to audition for The Andy Griffith Show. This audition proved to be the launchpad for his remarkable journey, as he secured the role of Opie Taylor becoming an integral part of the beloved sitcom. Over the course of eight seasons and an impressive 209 episodes, Ron literally grew up before the eyes of TV lovers across the nation. This formative experience laid the foundation for Ron Howard's success, propelling him into a remarkable career that would see him emerge as one of Hollywood's powerhouse directors. The Andy Griffith Show, 
with its timeless charm and enduring popularity, not only defined Ron's early years in the industry, but also set the stage for his subsequent television ventures. In a heartfelt and insightful 2010 interview, Ron Howard shared poignant details about his cherished childhood memories from the set of The Andy Griffith Show. Reflecting on his experiences, Ron specifically highlighted the remarkable relationship he had with his co-star and on-screen father, Andy Griffith. Ron's portrayal of Opie Taylor earned him not only acclaim but also a unique learning experience. He expressed how Andy Griffith, in the role of TV dad, treated him with kindness and generosity off the set. However, what set this relationship apart was the way Griffith transformed the experience into a valuable learning opportunity for the young actor. Rather than adopting a stern or taskmaster approach, Griffith made it a genuine exploration of creativity. Ron Howard fondly recalled how Andy Griffith provided him with profound insights into the intricacies of the entertainment industry. It wasn't just about delivering lines or hitting marks. It was about understanding the nuances of creativity and unraveling the mechanics behind why certain scenes were funny while others fell flat. In this nurturing environment, Ron was allowed a unique glimpse into the world of showbiz, guided by Griffith's wisdom and mentorship. In a poignant reflection, Ron Howard expanded on the enduring impact of his co-star and mentor Andy Griffith from their time together on The Andy Griffith Show. According to Ron, the insights gained from the late actor not only left an indelible mark on his early years, but continued to serve him well throughout his subsequent career. Ron emphasized that Andy Griffith's approach went beyond the traditional dynamics of a mentor-mentee relationship. Griffith, who portrayed Ron's TV dad, wasn't merely instructive. He turned the experience into a source of profound learning. According to Ron, Griffith provided valuable insights into creativity, explaining the mechanics behind what made certain scenes humorous while maintaining a playful and kind demeanor throughout the process. This approach not only facilitated a conducive learning environment, but also created lasting memories for Ron. The positive influence of Andy Griffith extended beyond the confines of the set. Ron attested to Griffith's genuine kindness and playfulness, describing how the late actor managed to balance the demands of the job with a warm and playful attitude. This combination of professionalism and affability contributed to the richness of their on-set relationship. When Andy Griffith passed away in 2012 at the age of 86, Ron Howard took the time to pay a heartfelt tribute on social media. On Twitter, he expressed his deep appreciation for Griffith's pursuit of excellence and the joy he found in the creative process. Ron acknowledged that Griffith's contributions had not only resonated across generations, but had also played a pivotal role in shaping his own life. However, do you know that Ron Howard ultimately made the decision to step away from acting? Despite his success on screen, Howard found that his true passion lay in leading productions from behind the camera. As the years went by, Howard's growing love for directing and producing films began to overshadow his enthusiasm for acting. In a December 2015 interview with Daily Express, he revealed that he had come to the realization that he wouldn't survive solely as an actor. Howard expressed that there were aspects of the acting profession he couldn't understand or reconcile with, and he admitted to lacking the assertiveness and leadership qualities he believed were necessary for success in acting. He acknowledged that some big stars, like Dustin Hoffman, could balance taking control while remaining actors, a skill set Howard felt he did not possess. In the early 2000s, Howard started to take fewer acting roles, redirecting his focus towards producing and directing. Notable projects during this transition included films like The Da Vinci Code, Frost Nixon, and Made in America. Additionally, from 2003 to 2019, he served as the narrator of Arrested Development. While he made a cameo appearance as himself in season two of This Is Us in 2017, Ron Howard has not taken on any acting roles since then.
The decision to step away from acting allowed Ron Howard to fully embrace his passion for filmmaking, and he has since established himself as a highly successful director and producer in the entertainment industry. Despite Ron Howard's apparent continued focus on directing, he revealed that there is one person who could potentially entice him to return to acting, his daughter Bryce. During a December 2022 episode of Variety's Awards Circuit podcast, the director of How the Grinch Stole Christmas expressed that if Bryce were to direct a project and ask him to participate, it would likely be enough to bring him back in front of the camera. It would probably be Bryce directing something and saying, Dad, I really need you to come in and do this, or you have to. Either of those would probably get me in the makeup chair and in front of the camera, Ron Howard shared. In a lighthearted manner, he added, I'm sure there'd be an audition involved, humorously noting, I'd be a little disappointed if she didn't make me audition. This insight into Ron Howard's potential return to acting highlights the strong familial bonds and the supportive dynamic within the Howard family, showcasing not only their individual successes, but also the possibility of collaborative ventures within the entertainment industry. Not only Ron, but many of his other co-stars also made the same decision. For example, Don Knotts, with a handful of acting gigs under his belt, received what would become his true big break when he was offered the role of Deputy Sheriff Barney Fife on The Andy Griffith Show. This iconic role would go on to define his career, making him widely recognized and beloved by audiences. Don's portrayal of the bumbling yet endearing Barney Fife became a standout feature of the show. After five seasons on The Andy Griffith Show, Don Knotts made the difficult decision to leave in 1965. His departure was seamlessly woven into the show's narrative, explained as a promotion to another police department. However, Don continued to make guest appearances in the final three seasons. In an interview, he revealed that he initially decided to leave because Andy Griffith had indicated that the show would only run for five seasons. Believing there wouldn't be a show without Griffith, Don began exploring other acting opportunities. Despite his plans to move on, Andy Griffith ultimately changed his mind due to network pressure, extending the show for an additional three seasons. By this time, Don Knotts had already received multiple offers for movies and TV shows and had invested considerable time and thought into his next career moves. Although he had made commitments elsewhere, the decision not to renew his contract for The Andy Griffith Show was not an easy one for Don. He expressed his love for the show and the difficulty he experienced in leaving a project that had become such an integral part of his life. Throughout his time on The Andy Griffith Show, Don Knotts earned five Emmy Awards, a testament to the comedic brilliance he brought to the character of Barney Fife. Post-Andy Griffith, Don transitioned to starring in comedy movies before joining the cast of the immensely popular sitcom Three's Company. In his role as the goofy and lovable landlord Mr. Furley from 1979 to 1984, Don continued to captivate audiences. His fame from The Andy Griffith Show was so substantial that cast members on Three's Company were reportedly intimidated to work with him, underscoring the enduring impact of his iconic portrayal of Barney Fife. After Don Knotts departed from The Andy Griffith Show, the decision was made to introduce a new character to fill the void left by the iconic Barney Fife. Jack Burns was cast as the replacement, playing the role of the new deputy, Warren Ferguson. However, Jack faced a challenging task as he attempted to step into the formidable shoes of Don Knotts, whose portrayal of Barney Fife had become synonymous with the show's success and had catapulted him to fame. Despite Jack Byrne's comedic talents, the audience's attachment to Don Knotts' character proved difficult to overcome. Many viewers argued that the show was never as good or the same after Knotts' departure. When Andy Griffith, the star of the show, decided to cast Jack Burns after enjoying one of his comedy sets, the reception from fans was less than enthusiastic. The introduction of the new deputy was met with resistance, with fans expressing their discontent at the attempt to replace the beloved Barney Fife. 
Jack Byrne's tenure on The Andy Griffith Show lasted for only 11 episodes, a relatively short-lived stint. Even Andy Griffith himself admitted that casting Jack Burns was a mistake. In an attempt to ease the transition and garner support for the new arrival, Don Knotts was brought back for an episode. However, this effort did little to assuage the audience's reluctance to accept the change. Jack Burns, facing the challenge of following in the footsteps of such a beloved character, admitted to feeling bitter after being removed from the show. Eventually, he moved past this setback and found success in his own niche. Jack transitioned to voiceover roles and carved out a place for himself behind the scenes as a writer and producer. Frances Bavier, renowned for her portrayal of the beloved character Aunt B on The Andy Griffith Show, had already been in the acting scene for a few years before landing the role that would become her big break. Aunt B not only made her famous, but also endeared her to audiences as one of the essential figures on the show. Despite planning to leave the show after its final season, Frances Bavier was convinced to stay on for the spin-off series. Since Andy Griffith wasn't going to be a part of the spin-off, producers sought to retain the familiar face of Aunt B to give viewers a reason to tune in. Francis initially considered leaving, but was persuaded by producers who emphasized the importance and beloved status of her character. While Aunt B exuded warmth and motherly charm on screen, behind the scenes, Francis Bavier was described as having a temperament that contrasted sharply with her on screen persona. Reports from those who worked with her depicted her as having a raging temper and maintaining an aloof distance from her co-stars. Despite these personality traits, the producer's flattery about Aunt B being a crucial character convinced her to continue her role in the spinoff. According to Ron Howard, who played Opie on the show, Frances Bavier was a dedicated professional but also kept to herself and had little tolerance for frivolities. Despite the sweet and inspiring relationship between Aunt B and Andy Griffith's character on the show, rumors circulated that Francis and Andy did not get along on set. In an interview, Andy Griffith disclosed that Francis called him a few months before her death, expressing regret for her behavior on set and seeking reconciliation. After the Andy Griffith show and its spin-off Mayberry RFD, Francis Bavier appeared in only one more movie, before deciding to quit acting altogether. Her departure from the entertainment industry marked the conclusion of a career that had been defined by the iconic character Aunt B, showcasing both the challenges and complexities behind the scenes. Andy Griffith also made the surprising decision to leave his own show after the series finale and did not reprise his role as Sheriff Andy Taylor in the spinoff Mayberry RFD. Despite the show's consistently high ratings and immense popularity, ranking as the number one show on television during its eighth and final season, with 35 million viewers per episode, Griffith felt that the dynamic had shifted significantly after the departure of Don Knotts. The absence of Don Knotts, who played Deputy Barney Fife, contributed to Griffith's perception that the show had lost some of its uniqueness. Additionally, Griffith expressed discomfort with the transition from black and white to color television, suggesting that the show's charm was compromised. Feeling physically and psychologically drained, he believed he could no longer invest the same level of effort and care into his character, Sheriff Andy Taylor. Despite not starring in the spinoff, Griffith remained involved as an executive producer he made a special appearance in an episode of Mayberry RFD, portraying a married Andy Taylor leaving Mayberry with his wife New Baby and Opie. The spin-off, continuing the theme of small-town living and traditional values, maintained high ratings for three seasons and featured beloved characters from The Andy Griffith Show, including Aunt B, Goober, Howard, and Emmett. While Andy Griffith was already known in the comedy and acting world before The Andy Griffith Show, his role in the series catapulted him to unprecedented fame and established him as a star. After leaving the show, 
Griffith ventured into new roles, established his own production company, and expanded his career in films and TV shows. He was also a singer, releasing country and gospel music albums, earning a Grammy for one of them in 1997. The Andy Griffith Show solidified his legacy, and his hometown, Mount Airy, North Carolina, pays tribute to him with the Andy Griffith Museum, a 2,500-square-foot space boasting the world's most extensive collection of Andy Griffith memorabilia, celebrating his remarkable career and life. What do you think about what Ron Howard hates about The Andy Griffith Show and why its cast members also quit? Leave us your comments in the section below. We hope you have found this helpful video. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this and see you in the next videos. Goodbye.